Hello everyone. This is Vupesh. Welcome to my channel again. So today we'll be discussing on Kubernetes concept, the session on cluster role, cluster role binding, role and role binding. Now this is a very very important topic from an understanding perspective. How role based access works in Kubernetes world, right? So how we can create a user service account and group, and how we can tag it to a particular you know, function. A quick recap: What we did in our previous videos in the same playlist. First of all, we understood the Kubernetes architecture and the different components of it, like control plane, worker nodes, and all the other aspects of it. And then in the next session, we saw what are pod services and deployments and how they interact with each other. The third and the important session was on the difference between a deployment and a stateful set, like when we use deployment and when we use stateful set for state. Full application we need to use stateful set, and for stateless application we need to use deployment. So that was a quick recap. Now today we'll be talking about uh, cluster role, cluster role binding, role and role binding. These all four terminologies are a little bit confusing, but with the help of examples we'll be able to understand you know, how it works. So at the right hand side you can see uh, uh, two quick diagrams. So what we are saying, uh, role and role binding, and cluster and cluster role binding can be given to a particular individual user. Or it can be given to a particular group, or it to a service account. Now, service account is just a account which can communicate to different different applications or different different ports within the same cluster. Now, if you just follow this serial convention, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Role binding is particular to a namespace, and cluster role binding is irrespective of namespace. So, whenever I'm creating any cluster level role, it's applicable to all ports and all namespace. And if I'm creating only role binding, it is confined to a particular namespace. Okay, so that is the only difference between a role binding and a cluster role binding. And the same thing is being screened this another diagram like a user, a group, and a service account can be tagged to a role binding, and that role binding can be a read-only pod access. Okay, now that role binding will be tagged to a particular role, and ultimately that role will be given to a pod. Now I can do a get kubectl get pods and kubectl you know listing of the pods. So this is a quick, uh, you know, description uh, about the theoretical aspect of it. Let's quickly see with the help of examples, and be, it, it will become, you know, crystal clear. So I've created a small uh, uh, set of examples for this. So we'll be taking all these examples. So first of all, let us understand the cluster role with the help of this YAML file. Now what is a cluster role? So if you see this file, the right hand side. Uh, the API version is rpack authorization kts.io uh, slash p1. So this is the API group where we communicate with the cluster. So all rpack related API group. Now this is a cluster role, and I'm saying that please create a cluster level role of secret reader. This is just name of the role, and I'm saying API group. Uh, this means that I'm just giving it to all API that are present onto the cluster, and then I want this role to be created so that it can read all secrets from all namespace. So this is the resource name and this is the verb means what this guy can do with this. So the secret reader role, cluster role can actually get, watch and list all the secrets that are present in all the namespace. So you can see there is no namespace given here. It's all for all namespace. Now this cluster role is completely, you know, you know, have a marriage with cluster role binding. So you can see the cluster role, the secret reader is being binded or being, you know, with this cluster role binding. See, now what I'm saying, I'm binding this cluster role to a particular group called manager. I'm saying that please give full access right to manager group uh, so that it can read all the secrets from all the namespace. So if, if you can understand that, first of all, I created a cluster role and then I use that cluster role into cluster role binding so that uh, this group manager can read all the secret across all the namespace. So here also you can see I have not given any kind of namespace filtration. So that is a difference between cluster role and cluster role binding. So let me, let me quickly run these commands so that we, it becomes clear how to Clear the screen. Okay. 
okay so i'll just do a kubectl apply minus f i'll just first of all create a cluster role this cluster role.yaml so this has created a secret reader now i'll run the cluster role binding now this has binded that cluster role with this cluster role binding so what i'm saying this uh, group manager will have all the read access so let's quickly see we'll see the working example for an application but first of all understand the concept so what is a role role is something similar to cluster role but it has a different slightly different meaning so why i'm what i'm saying that i'm creating another role so our back the api version will remain same i want to create a role called as pod reader now this is something i want to read a pod but into this namespace only default namespace now role is related to a particular namespace it is confined to a particular namespace so i am saying that i want to read all pods within the this default namespace and creating a role for this now i'll bind this role to a role binding i am saying that please have this pod reader bind to a user called you know, jane and she'll be able to read only pods from this default namespace see that is the difference earlier cluster role you we were saying that you can do it anywhere at the cluster level but here we are just confining it to default namespace now there's another another catch in role binding we are tagging tagging it to a role this was the role right pod reader in role binding we are just tagging it to a second so in role binding we are tagging it to a role now so we have another example of role binding where we are tagging it to cluster role so that is also possible i want to create a read secret because read pod has done but i want to create a uh, another role binding called as secret reading and since it is a role binding it is confined to a particular namespace i'm saying that please read all read all secrets from this namespace i'm giving this permission to user called as dave but it will uh, do a binding with the cluster role called a secret reader, which we created some time back if you see see so what i'm saying that i can so the ex role binding to example is simply to make you understand that i can use a cluster role in role binding also okay so don't get confused so i'm just saying with the help of this role binding i want this user to read all the secret within this same space right so this is a slight thin line difference between role binding and a cluster role binding so let me run these things and then we'll see the actual example with the another application so i'm just applying this role this is for your theoretical understanding how to run these and then i'll just apply role binding and then finally the another example of role binding to now you see the difference so all these roles have been created now i'll just do a, i'm on which namespace i am into matrix namespace okay now in this matrix namespace if i do a get role so only this role would be visible because i've not created any role in the matrix namespace all my role is created in default namespace so i'll just do a k get role minus n default now i'll see my pod reader see the role and role binding is confined to a particular namespace now i'll see k get role binding now i can see read secret which i created this in this example you can see read secret which is in the matrix name so i'm saying please read all the secrets from this namespace so this is the role binding that has been created here so if i do again role binding minus n default so i can see these three pods which i created some time back in default now cluster role and cluster role binding doesn't need any kind of you know names so i can see cluster role so i'll see all the cluster so because cluster role is not dependent on any names so if i scroll it to the top i'll see the 
cluster all that I created some time back. Uh, secret reader, see, coming at the bottom. So this was a cluster rule, and what was the cluster rule binding that I created it? So this was a cluster rule. So let me do a gig get cluster rule binding. Let me not do a grab first of all. Let me fetch everything. Now you can see the cluster rule binding that I created five minutes ago. That is stacked to a secret reader. So that is how it works from the from the understanding perspective. Now let me take a very you know, important example so that you can it becomes a crystal clear for you how it works. So if you remember that we have installed EFK earlier in our previous uh, videos, but today we'll just take it for understanding perspective. So I'll go to this EFK setup. Now the EFK is nothing but Elastic Fluent B and Kibana. So I'll just take, take an example of this Fluent D. Now this is an application that helps you to capture or collect log from all the ports from all the namespaces. And what are the different different manifests that are there? So first of all, we are creating a service account called as Fluent D, which will just go to all ports and namespace and get the logs. And we are creating a daemon set so that it goes to at every node. No, this is it in demo set and a uh, deployment status that you can see previous lectures. But yeah, so so this service account will go to that, and then the importance of cluster role and cluster role binding. Okay. Now let me quickly jump on to this. Okay, I'll go to the fluent D. Fine. Now I'll just deploy this application kubectl apply minus f. First of all, I'll just uh, deploy service account. Now service account is already there. That's okay. That's not been created. Now I'll just apply minus f and then daemon set. Now daemon set has been created in this namespace. So let me see. K kubectl Get pod. So I'm I'm taking it pretty slowly so that you can understand. So you can see the pod has not been coming up because I intentionally did not run these two files, cluster role and cluster role binding. But I'll tell you what is the importance of these two files. Now I'll see the log of this pod. Now if you scroll, you'll see. Uh, the namespace is forbidden user system service account fluent D. So we have created a service account. Okay, this one, uh, which is actually trying to capture the logs from uh, all the nodes. It is only it is only a single node clusters. It's trying to capture node uh, the logs from this code, but it doesn't have access. Right. So these kind of errors you will see in your pod logs. See, the pod is forbidden. User doesn't have, cannot list pods. A user is forbidden to kind ports error 403. So this is because that this service account we have defined the application that please capture the log from all the ports from all the namespace is within the same uh, demon set is within the same node. Now it is a single node cluster. Let me show you that as well. We get node. So this demon set is running on this node and it is trying to go to each namespace each pod and get the logs but it is not working so i'll come on to my manifest again now what cluster role is doing i'm creating a cluster role called a slow and d it is not related to any namespace i'm saying that please allow these two resources to be tracked down or to be watch get or list i can do anything on these two resources and i'll create a, another role binding called a this okay uh, I mean, the cluster role is this is used in role binding. And I'm saying, please allow this service account with name this to bind to get bind uh, it with this cluster role. So now I'm saying, please give access to this fluent D to all the pods, to all the namespace so that it can go and fetch the log. And so the moment I will run these two things, and hopefully this uh, deployment should start working. So I'll just do a 
I'm taking this, uh, you know, video pr pretty slowly because this is a very, very important aspect, the concept, and not everyone is aware about it. Uh, the cluster rule, cluster rule binding, role and role binding. Now the cluster rule has been created. I'll create a cluster rule binding also. Cluster rule. Come on. Okay. So cluster rule, cluster rule binding now has been created. I'll just again see KGP. I'll just delete the pod. Hopefully this should come up. I deleted the pod. Let me see what is the error now. Okay, so as you can see, the Fluent D pod is not running because uh, we have not created a cluster role and cluster role binding. Let me see the logs, what it is saying for this pod because we have not provided the service account access to this. Okay, so this service account is not having access again. So let me just see the cluster role and cluster role binding. So first of all, we need to get a cluster role called as Fluent D, which we are saying that please read all pods and across all namespaces. And then binding it to the service account causes slow and D, which is present in metrics name. So I'm saying please bind this cluster role to fluent D service account, and that can read my all ports and service. So I'll just create this cluster role and binding again. Whether it will resolve the problem or not. Create cluster role. Sometimes shortcut doesn't work. Okay, the cluster rule has been created. K apply minus F. The rule binding also I have created. Now let's see. So maybe I need to delete this part to restart the demon set. Perfect. Now it is creating the container. Ah, see, it is running. So finally, we have resolved this problem that uh, the service account was not able to get the log from ports and names. So that was because of, uh, uh, you know, not having access. And we have used a cluster and cluster binding to give this access. So you can see everything is working properly. There's no error in the log. So yeah, that is that is pretty much about the concepts. I took some time to explain uh, these four items, but yeah, this is very, very important to understand the how it works cluster role, role binding the role and role binding at namespace level and cluster and cluster role binding at the cluster level okay so i think i'll just wrap up this video for now maybe we'll connect sometime later for some of the important aspects so thanks for now if you're not subscribed the channel please subscribe it from the right hand side from here so that you can get the latest updates on all the videos that i'm publishing on this channel related to devops grafana or any other, you know, AWS or your DevOps concept. Bye for now. Yeah, stay tuned. Thank you. Bye bye.